Hello and welcome to Best of the Worst, a celebration of the very best of the very bad. We'll be looking at everything from the worst inventions to the worst thing to happen to a streaker. Not to mention this, the worst mistake to make at a Mafia wedding. <laughs> so let's welcome our guest this week on David Mitchell's team, comedian Rob Rouse. Hello. And with Johnny Vaughan tonight, TV presenter Jane Middlemiss. <laughs> Round one is Pick the Worst, in which both teams try to pick the worst from a number of options. Once they've made their choices, the audience votes, and the team the audience agrees with gets the points. Tonight we're picking the worst diet, and our contenders are fast food, fresh air, a car, and human flesh. <laughs> Uh, that's the uh, uh, Uruguayan <laughs> rugby team. They crashed that right. plane on the Andes and they ended up eating their dead mates. That's right. What's quite odd to me is that fellow just crouching down appears to be slathering as if he knows somehow the plane's yes. going to crash. <laughs> it just must be a really odd thing, tucking into a mate. Uh... Especially when you get to, like, his <laughs> tattoo. Is, you... is odd the word? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is odd, gets... isn't it? This, <laughs> this is slice odd. of Gary's knee. <laughs> I would describe this, this experience as an odd experience. <laughs> I, I, I read a book recently about, about cannibalism, but apparently the tastiest part of a human is that little bit there Ooh. on the fingers. Or that really feels weird when you pick up a hand and eat it. <laughs> yeah. If anybody here is ever in the position of having to pick up a hand to eat it, they yeah. can assuage <laughs> yeah. that feeling of oddness with the knowledge that it is going to be yes. delicious. <laughs> <laughs> These are to die for! <laughs> How long before they decided they would start eating their dead? A couple so, of hours? Two weeks. No. It was, it was 15 Ten days. Ten days. Ten days. I was Ten in days. a lift recently, it was about, we were trapped for 20 minutes. Sure. And already I was looking around. <laughs> <laughs> what did the Uruguayan rugby team drink? Piss. On the man? Piss. Piss. No, that's okay. absolutely right, yes. I've got to tell you, if you are going to drink piss, what you do is you put it in the bottle, you let it settle for five minutes. That's what they do in survival packs. They have a, a special bottle, so it settles, and you can get a bit of... Uh... Could you get, like, a, a piss cafetiere? <laughs> <laughs> to make sure all the, the bits go. Well, you could, Dave. It'd be quite a niche product. <laughs> <laughs> After crashing in the Andes, a Uruguayan rugby team had to eat their dead teammates to survive, although one rugby player refused to eat an entire body as he had a nut allergy. And also, this guy at the bottom here, that's Monsieur Mange, too. Exactly. And, and it's claimed he ate a plane. But how does he? Presumably, he just cuts the plane up into tiny, tiny. little bits that yeah. just go through his system exactly. and come out the other end pretty much undamaged. Yeah, you want to impress me? Eat a man. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Eat a man covered in metal. Eat yes. Jimmy Savile. Eat, yeah, eat yes. him in armour. Yeah. Yeah. So, in fact, actually, if you think about it, Yes, it's quite possible that someone could do that. And the only thing that's, that's at all amazing is that someone has been idiotic enough to bother. <laughs> if, however, <laughs> if, however, he just walks up to a plane and his mouth opens weirdly, yeah. like a sort of snake, <laughs> plane-shaping yeah. neck goes down, <laughs> and that's, you know, he's set up for a month, then, yeah. then fair enough. <laughs> but I don't think that's the way he does it. I think it's hundreds of tiny <laughs> bits of metal <laughs> going through his system, coming out the other end unharmed. <laughs> and that is the act yeah. of, of a, of a oh, yeah. well, at best, a wanker. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> there is, of course, also a Madame Mangetou, or Vanessa Feltz, as she's better known. <laughs> This is the controversial guru of breatharianism, Australian Ellen Grieve, who claims she can live entirely on air and light. Uh, I bet she is. Well, yeah, basically, like basically, 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 we know you can't live off air and light. Really? That's been scientifically <laughs> proven. We're not 100 percent there isn't a dinosaur in Loch Ness, but we know you can't live off air and light. So, she's a liar. <laughs> yeah. She's just I, I, wa I, I, wasting she's our liar. time lying, Liar. and she should be told oh, not to lie, to tell the truth, and to fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> what uh, what <laughs> evidence is there that the breatharian diet is far from healthy? You starve to death from yeah. it. Yeah, at least three people have died from it. Can I just, like, point out that she's pretending that she's in some sort of yoga position. Yeah. She ain't. She's just got her legs yeah. crossed. She's not even in a lotus position. And what she's doing with her hands is wrong as well. Tell you what she's, got, she's doing with her hands. She's got a snack egg in each hand. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just say, the yep. guy with the burger, as someone who's losing his hair, that is such a waste of hair. <laughs> 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 More and more I see tramps with hair and I think, you don't need that hair, I do. <laughs> Why is your hair so thick? <laughs> Dave's got wonderfully thick hair, yes, he chooses to style it like the Fuhrer. <laughs> <laughs> it's a waste of thick hair. 
Is this the guy who lived on McDonald's? He's a guy called Don Guska, whose claim to fame is that he has eaten 20,000 Big Macs in his lifetime. Oh, look at his hair now! <laughs> Do you know, it's really flyaway as well. <laughs> Bastard! <laughs> Uh, what did he do in a McDonald's parking lot? A massive shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, Don Gorska proposed to his wife oh. in the parking lot of McDonald's. Classic. Oh, that's, oh, that's changed everything. That's lovely. Tender moments, he slipped Beautiful. the onion ring over her finger. <laughs> <clears throat> did she say yes, or did she say, get a life, you loser? No, he said yes. His Fuck wife. off! <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? It's a great thing in a Geordie accent, isn't it? It's a gift to the world. So is it, there's that fellow who does the voiceovers on Big Brother as well, who they take the piss out of just by giving him eights and zeros in the phone numbers, isn't it? Kind of, you know, vote for Pete, Dale, ooh, it's, ooh, ooh, it's, ooh, 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 who, uh, that, that cannibal arrangement on the internet. Yeah. That man who ate his own knob. <laughs> yeah. Flombed and he, by the he other guy. Fried, fried up in front yeah, of him yeah. by the other guy. And it, it was tough. He didn't like it. Yeah, the thing uh, is, he, he, to be fair <laughs> to him, yeah. he, he probably overcooked it. If you cook in knob, you just literally just... <laughs> <laughs> 10 just 15 in. seconds either side. It's, it's like yeah. a scallop. Oh. <laughs> I'm guessing they're essentially two bits of... To the knob, aren't there? In terms of well, how you've you got cook one, it. don't guess. <laughs> I'm guessing in terms of cooking. I think you're yeah. quite familiar. So, yeah. yes, which is the worst? Which one gets your vote, uh, Dave and Rob? Essentially, of these four weird eating mm. scenarios, yes. three of them are led by publicity seeking bastards, mm -hmm. and the other one is just a poor bunch of people who ended up on a mountain starving. Yeah. I, I think it, you've got to be, it's got to be Mr Monge too, the guy that eats metal. That's definitely the worst out of those. I think the cannibals, all right, they had to do it because they were starving, but that's got to be the worst diet. I'm going to bring the audience around on this one. You ready for this? Yeah. Fact is, audience, and I know you're going to vote with me on this, is that <laughs> we joke about it, yeah, but these people have eaten their friends. Yeah, they're mates. And we John, look at Johnny, each other. Do you, you, you going to go with Dave? Do you a spotlight for this? No, bit? I'm just saying. Yeah, I'm just saying. Oh, Dave, Dave, yeah. Dave, Dave, yeah. Dave just, let's, just, let's just get off the, the train to Laughterville and let's stand on the platform of seriousness just for a second. Yeah. <laughs> but there is a serious point here, and that point is these people <laughs> ate their friends in miserable circumstances. Can I make another point? They had to eat them raw. Yeah, and they had to eat them raw. And you're eating your mate and you're having a laugh from on the plane. Now he's there, he's dead, and you've got a knife and you're going to eat him. I ordered vegetarian. <laughs> 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 to score your points, the audience needs to agree with you, but let's see what they say. So, audience, vote now. And I think they'll go with us on this, because they like their friends. They, they strike me as a very people people. <laughs> OK, so I can tell you now, the worst diet is the car. Oh, oh, hey, oh, 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 hey. oh, oh hey. Yeah! I just, I'd like to thank you for standing up for good sense in the face <laughs> of a horrific piece of daytime drama <laughs> from Johnny Hall. Now it's time for the best of the worst bottom five. This week a rundown of the very worst inventions dreamt up by the human brain. We show the teams a picture, they have to guess what inspired invention is being illustrated. At number five we have the inventor Franz Reichelt. But what invention is he proudly showing off? It's not a lavatory that you can walk around in. Is oh, it, it is as well. Right. It's a lavatory. <laughs> it is. Is it a Victorian method of sneaking extra goths into uh, Jesus and Mary chain concerts? Because they never bring enough. They never have any money on them, do they, goths? As your teammate, I owe you the respect of asking why the Victorians would need to invent any such thing. Oh, have I got the era Nearly a nearly hundred years before this band existed. Is, it, is that the Victorian era? My history is well, not you said, good. is it something the Victorians developed to stop goths <laughs> getting... <laughs> or they help goths yeah. into Jesus and Mary team? Thompson. And I'd say, as a historian, that that's unlikely. <laughs> or, at best, remarkably prescient of the Victorians. <laughs> um, this is an overcoat that was designed to double up as a parachute. Oh, how yeah. <laughs> Wow. Uh, anyone like to guess what happened when he tested it from the top of the Eiffel Tower in 1912? He died. He plummeted straight to his death. <laughs> his parachute overcoat was a total failure, though thankfully he was wearing another of his inventions, the trouser coffin. <laughs> <laughs> uh, number four in the list of worst inventions. What's this it's a flow device beat. for? Yes. Yeah, we, we've all got a flow beat. Yeah. 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 Mine's, mine's all clogged. Yeah. Oh. 
<laughs> it's, for, it's for beekeeping, actually. It's flow bees. It's to keep the flow of bees steady. <laughs> you must have had that on a hot summer's day. You think, these bees are so irregular. I'd like a regular <laughs> stream of bees ruining my picnic. And this is to ensure you get about one every 20 seconds. Just yeah. comes through. Here's a clue. Oh, it cuts his hair. It styles his hair. It's a hairdryer that styles his hair without a hairdresser. I think I'll give that to Jane. Yes, yep. Jane. Uh, it's the Floby Super Mini Vac Haircutter. At number three, which invention is pictured here? That's for carrying soup. Uh... It's for carrying large amounts of no. soup into Dave, battle. Do you know what it is? Yeah. It's for thrash metal fans to sneak into Glastonbury. <laughs> <laughs> It is the first ever steam motor car, as invented in 1769 by French engineer Joseph Cugnot. This is, in fact, the first ever car accident, which featured on the popular show Police Engraving Action. <laughs> <laughs> At number two in our list of worst inventions, what invention is depicted here? Is it a car seat that, on impact, it saves your life? No. Oh. Is it a car seat that, when on impact, it's... it finishes you off? No, it's an, yeah. aircraft seat. it's an aircraft seat that makes you adopt the crash position automatically. In a roundabout kind of a way, it does. Oh! <laughs> it is, in fact, an airplane hijacker injector. All the cabin crew have to do to render a would-be hijacker unconscious is inject them via a syringe fitted in their seat. <laughs> there is an EasyJet version of this device where a heavy bag just drops out of the overhead locker. <laughs> Alexander, sorry, yeah. I've just, just been away this week, yeah? I, I think, you know that question, did you pack your own bags? Mm. I'm not sure that's the best way to weed out terrorists. Not really. <laughs> did you pack your own bags? Yes, I did. Yeah. With a bomb. <laughs> did anyone give you a parcel? Even if they did, you're not going to say, because it's such a... Ah. Also, what about, you know, around Christmas, a lot of people are given parcels quite innocently. Yes. <laughs> Do you know what's in them? No, I don't, and I won't till yeah. the 25th. Yeah, I don't <laughs> yeah. I've given them a squeeze my, while I was waiting. My aunt sure. gave me a parcel. What Open it now. No, I will not <laughs> open it. <laughs> open it now. No! Yeah, I'm crying, have... ripping yes. aside. Save the paper! Save the paper! <laughs> 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 also, what do they type when you check in an airline and you go in saying, "Yeah, I'm, you know, I booked. It's my name. Yeah, I want to go on the plane. Yeah, okay, that's fine." <laughs> <laughs> dear mum, what are they typing? Dear yes, mom. he has. Dear person who is flying the plane, it's me here <laughs> down on the front cockpit. <laughs> yes, one of the passengers has arrived. His name is David Mitchell, <laughs> and yes. It's still his intention to get on the plane, so would that be OK? Hope you're well. It's a lovely day for flying. <laughs> <laughs> and at number one, what's this canine invention? It's a dog. <laughs> <laughs> That's a St Barry corgi. <laughs> and when people up a mountain, when they're skiing, get bad breath, they send out a St. Barry, and it's got a little packet of mints. <laughs> oh, okay. No, here's a clue. It makes them bark. No. If you want the dog to bark, you have a little electric shark, and it it's barks. It's to stop them barking. It's to stop them barking. Yeah. It drives the dog no. insane. It's to change no. the tone of their bark to make it more operatic. <laughs> Is it dogs <laughs> who've lost their voice box because they've I'm had a heavy some smoking dog. <laughs> <laughs> Please. Oh, oh. You're, you're very nearly there. You are getting too near my owner. <laughs> Please go away. It is a device called the Bao Lingua, a Japanese device which translates what your dog is saying to you. That's not <laughs> possible! <laughs> that's, like, that's like the air diet! The Baolingual can translate up to 200 phrases, though the most popular can. are Can I have some water, please? Can I have a walk, please? And would you mind awfully if I rogered your leg? <laughs> <laughs> so let's take a look at the scores, and at this point, neither team is the worst, so still plenty to play for in part two. See you in a minute. Welcome back to Best of the Worst, and it's time to ask which ends the worst. Two video clips, just one question, which is going to end in the worst way? We start with some football action, and if you don't want to feel slightly queasy, look away now.
I think he gets tangled up in one of those fences on the side and it really ends horribly. I think. <laughs> no, I seriously, I mean, it, look, I still wouldn't show it. There's loads of streakers. It's very rare you see a close up of a streaker, normally they pan away. You know, like when they show hooligan activity on the terrace, they always sort of pan away when it's exactly what you want to see. And they're going, well, these are terrible scenes here. You think, well, show us these terrible <laughs> scenes so I can judge this terribleness for myself. Yeah, and they say yeah. it with that sort of yeah. slightly lustful voice. Yeah. Yeah. This is terrible. Yeah, yeah. This, this, this is disgusting. Terrible. And then they do the other this sort of disgraceful behaviour. <laughs> <laughs> and the next thing they always say is, these are mindless animals. They're absolutely mindless. The next thing they'll go is someone goes, these are highly organised, <laughs> highly organised, mindless animals. Well, ants. Well. Yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> OK, here comes the second clip, and it is from Poland. Oh, OK. Hey, it's okay. East Europe, it involves a bear and a guy in some kind of martial arts gear. This yeah. can't this, be good. This, this cannot get, be good. It's got to get Can judo in. beat a bear? He looks like, yeah. I love this bear, he doesn't do anything wrong. Seriously, yeah. you can oh. stroke him, you can oh. stroke him, and you can't. I'm not an yeah. expert in, in bear-human <laughs> interaction, but generally the humans don't tend to win. I'd imagine. Oh, come off it. The humans are winning. Well, there aren't any bears marching outside a <laughs> palace with human skin hats. No, we're, we're talking... <laughs> come on. <laughs> Overall, we're winning. Good point, yeah. Mr yeah. Mitchell. Right, now it's decision time. It's which ends the worst, so which of these two clips is going to end the worst? Johnny's team? Easily the bear one. There's no doubt about it, cos it's got a muzzle. You don't muzzle something unless... It's a wild animal, If Johnny. it's unmuzzled, something bad happens. It doesn't matter how much judo kit you put on. <laughs> you're, gonna, you're going to... You're not going to beat the power of claw and jaw. David's team. Well, I think, I mean, I think there's a lot more potential for problems with the bear <laughs> one. Yeah. I don't think this is a time when you want to go for the less obvious answer. <laughs> OK, well, let's see what happens, starting with this one. <laughs> Oi! <laughs> oh! oh! <laughs> what a move. What a great move by the bee. Oh. Why did the bee take him out? <laughs> 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 I'm the bee! I'm the naked guy, Dexter. <laughs> Truly, I am law. <laughs> Good on you, Bertie. <laughs> We've made a society where just being naked as we were born is somehow yeah, yeah. weird, but being dressed as a the bee, bee is yeah. positively commendable. <laughs> Prior to being tackled, the streaker made this gesture towards the Preston fans and learnt to his cost that their mascot is Randy the donkey. <laughs> So, did something worse happen with the bear? <laughs> this is going to go so tits up. <laughs> oh, oh, my God! Oh, my God. Oh, is it? Just a shoe left. Yeah, go on, do a karate move, mate. Do some of your karate. Yeah. <laughs> Ippon! Looks like that karate's really working there. <laughs> oh, yes, use the stick once. <laughs> She's still in there! <laughs> She's still in there! Right. else! That's yeah, someone else! She's turned into a blonde. Look at that judo move. Gosh, how effective. <laughs> now, they're too many fighting now. Thank God there was a ninja there. <laughs> oh, my... Oh, my God! Again, again, again! Yeah. Do you want to see it again? There's yeah! Of course you do. They don't want commoners. want to see humans being eaten. <laughs> this is my day to meet the bear. I like bears. <laughs> Turn so quick, he wants I like to... bears, but bears don't like me. <laughs> <laughs> you bitch! If you ever patronise me, I'm steaming in there. Look at that. That <laughs> bear looked round and immediately decided, if ever in my life I've seen a terrible bitch. <laughs> <laughs> you spiteful cow. <laughs> I've... I've seen you in my Look nightmare. at the guy with the stick. It, it, if there was an award for the most ineffective contribution ever bear attack. to subduing a bear, yeah. I would say man with stick Just look would here. win that yeah. prize. Okay, let's have a quick look at the, uh, the man with the stick. Yeah, okay, look at the stick. It comes out. Yeah. Uh, Whack. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Incidentally, that woman has since stood down as head of the Save the Bear campaign. <laughs> So, clearly, the bear clip ended worse, on the obvious grounds that, on the whole, it's more dangerous to be attacked by a bear than a man from Burnley dressed as a bee. <laughs> so, at the end of that round, the points go to both teams. Hey. Hey.
Well done, us. Yeah. Okay. All to play for now as we turn to the wall of worst. Our final quickfire buzz around. One point per question, so fingers on the buzzers, and we start with worst luck. What's this? Oh, sorry. No, <laughs> it's fine. Sorry, I did the buzzer. Aye, I was. Worst luck, what's... You were showing you how to do the buzzer. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't you been on the course? <laughs> <laughs> worst luck, what's this Somerset woman angry about? <laughs> I, I, I think that maybe she's trying to reason with a giant who's trying to break up with her. <laughs> <laughs> I think she's complaining about what's round. She's like, it's like the messiest beach in the world. Or, this used to be my house and now it's just some bags and some tubes. Yeah, I think I might give um, you that one. Oh. A lorry crashed outside her house, tipping 44 tonnes of rotting food, mm. rubble and household waste into her front garden. <laughs> If you're wondering how long it would take to clear up 44 tonnes of rubbish, council workers took six hours. So about an hour. <laughs> Worst theory. What theory have these monkeys been working on? I just think it's something as simple as they're trying to get in the fruit, Alexander. Is that what it is? Uh, a computer was put in their cage to see if they would type any Shakespeare. It's supposed to be an infinite number of monkeys. Not, not three, yes. yeah. <laughs> I mean, no, it's just like we need an infinite number of monkeys. We can't quite run to an infinite number of monkeys. Oh, maybe that's not a problem. Yeah. How many have you got? Have you got quite a lot? Yes, I suppose it depends how many you think quite a lot of monkeys. Well, tell you what, just tell me the number you've got. Three. Oh, I was thinking, if it was 48 billion, yeah. maybe that's closer to the mark. What yeah. actually happened? Nothing. They had an orange, and they all bounded <laughs> off, and then they threw shit at a load of school kids. <laughs> In one month, they typed five pages, including this. It's quite a lot of order to it. Yeah. It's actually the beginning of an Alan Akebourne play. Yeah. <laughs> The monkeys failed to write any Shakespeare on the computer, or they did manage to invest heavily in a Nigerian business opportunity. <laughs> Worst book. What is this novel by Saddam Hussein titled? Love in Baghdad. No, no, it's not. No, no, Five no. go mad in Basra. Yeah. <laughs> it's called Get Out of Here, Curse You. That's a warm title, isn't it? Yeah. I'd like to go to a signing. <laughs> the Fair. translator said, I really think this book should be made into a musical. Poor old Saddam, the last thing he wants is a phone call from Ben Elton. <laughs> Worst line, what's wrong with the way this white line has been painted? You haven't seen all the line there. I think this is a line that isn't, doesn't it swerve round a bit of roadkill? I think I'll give you that. It doesn't actually swerve around it, but uh, it's in Georgia, USA, and there's a picture of it. <gasps> in investigating the death, wildlife police drew a white outline around the armadillo and squashed another one. Worth cheap. What did Rosie Ruiz do in the Boston Marathon? Johnny's team. She waited round the corner and sort of didn't run it at all and then just did the end bit. Absolutely right. Jane, you are so good. Right. Uh, how did she qualify for the Boston Marathon? Um... By cheating in the New York Marathon. <laughs> she caught the Manhattan subway, apparently. She what a tried, <laughs> tried the same trick at the London Marathon and came in last by five hours. <laughs> And at the end of that round, let's take a look at the final oh. scores. This week's winners are Johnny and Jane, but this week's worst team are David and Rob. Well done, thank you. That means you win, because it's about the best to get the worst of them. Now, Our thanks then to Johnny and Jane, David and Rob, and there's just time for this, the worst site for a public toilet attendant in New Delhi. <laughs> You've been watching Best of the Worst. Good night. Zap over to E4 shortly if you're in the mood for a movie with Mike Myers as defrosted sex on legs, Austin Powers, international man of mystery. Next here on Channel 4, Friday night, get well Welsh. Charlotte Church is coming up to clue you in on her very first show.